Hi guys, welcome to Empower and my name is Caroline Porter Thomas. Thank you so much as usual for watching my YouTube channel. So in this video, I wanted to go over a medication that you're going to see a lot. I give this medication probably, I don't know, maybe three to four times a week and that is Coumadin. Coumadin is an anticoagulant medication. It has been around since the 1950s and it is a very effective medication in the prevention of blood clots. So I wanted to do this video overview for you because I know that you're going to see it a lot and you're probably gonna have questions on your NCLEX examination or NCLEX prep classes on it. So it's a medication that's so important to the healthcare community and it has had a lot of good impacts on patients. I know there's a lot of other anticoagulant medications out there. There's a lot of them that are pretty new. So I'm also gonna try to do video reviews on those as well, but I know Coumadin much better. So I wanted to at least start with this one because I've been giving it since I started nursing. And the other anticoagulant medications, I pretty much just started giving the last few years. So I figured I would start off with what I know best and then go on from there. But if there is one particular anticoagulant medication that you would like to see a video review on, then please post it in the comments below and I will be sure to put that specific medication on the list. Also, after this video, make sure you go to my website and take the quiz. One thing that I wanna warn you is when you do watch videos or read information, you can really get a false sense of understanding. And it's not to say that you don't understand what I just said, but you really have to put things in question in real life formats. Taking NCLEX style questions will help you understand the medication at a deeper level. So we have a little quiz set up that you can take and all you have to do is click right here when you get a chance or after the video I'll put a link as well. In the next few videos we're also going to go over some nursing exam or NCLEX style questions in video format just so you have those if you're waking up in the morning and you're, you're brushing your teeth or cleaning the house and you just want those to play then we went ahead and prepared some videos for you too. Coumadin also known as warfarin. Warfarin is the most used oral anticoagulant in the world and has been used for more than 50 years for therapy in prevention of thrombus formation and subsequent thromboembolic events. Anticoagulants are blood thinners which prevents the formation of blood clots as well as prevents existent blood clots from increasing in size. Blood clots can hinder the blood circulation and lead to serious medical conditions like stroke, heart attack, and pulmonary embolism. Thus, warfarin is helpful in treating and preventing vein and artery blockage, stroke, and heart attack. Mechanism of Action Warfarin slows down the formation of blood clots within 24 hours but the complete effect takes place between 72 to 96 hours after taking the medication. Blood clot formation is a complicated process which requires certain compounds known as coagulating factors to be present. These coagulating factors are produced by the liver in the presence of sufficient vitamin K. Warfarin acts by inhibiting the presence of vitamin K, and this inhibits the formation of coagulating factors. Substances that require vitamin K for their formation are the anticoagulant protein C and S and multiple other factors. Therefore, medications like warfarin block coagulating factors and disturb the process of the clot formation, thus slowing down clot formation. In the case of blood clots that are already formed, warfarin stops the clot from getting bigger. It also prevents the breakage of the clot, which can otherwise be dangerous if it travels in the bloodstream and blocks a blood vessel. Warfarin cannot destroy or dissolve a blood clot that is already there, but the blood clot itself may slowly dissolve with time. Nor can warfarin reverse ischemic tissue damage, but it may help avoid secondary thromboembolic complications that can be dangerous and even fatal. Indication Warfarin, or Coumadin, is indicated for prophylaxis of pulmonary embolism, venous thrombosis, and its extension to prevent blood blood clots from moving to other parts of the body. It can also reduce the risk of another stroke or heart attack in clients who have already had a stroke or heart attack, and also reduce the risk of death. It can also prevent and treat blood clots associated with atrial fibrillation, which is a rapid irregular heartbeat. It can also reduce risk of blood clots and heart valve replacements and blood clots in the lungs and legs. 
contraindications. Warfarin is contraindicated, which means that these people should not get this medication in pregnant women because warfarin can pass to the uterus and harm the fetus. It can cause congenital malformations. It can also cause warfarin, embryopathy, and fetal toxicity and fetal hemorrhage. It increases the risk of fetal mortality and instant abortion. An exception to this is pregnant women who have mechanical heart valves and are at risk for thromboembolism. In this case, the benefit might outweigh the risk. It is also contraindicated for clients who have recently had a major surgery, eye surgery, surgery of the central nervous system, or traumatic surgery leading to large open areas. It is also contraindicated in people who have blood dyscrasias or hemorrhagic tendencies or bleeding tendencies associated with unsupervised clients with medical issues with potential or high level of non-compliance, excessive bleeding or active ulceration of the gastrointestinal, respiratory, genitourinal, or cerebral aneurysm, dissecting aorta, central nervous system hemorrhage, spinal puncture, and other diagnostic or therapeutic procedures with excessive bleeding tendencies. Threatened abortion, preeclampsia, and eclampsia, pericarditis, and pericardial effusions, major or regional lumbar block, anesthesia, bacterial endocarditis, malignant hypertension, or hypersensitivity to warfarin or its components. Warfarin monitoring. Warfarin is used to reduce blood clot formation, but not to inhibit it completely. Which is why after taking warfarin, the client's blood is monitored through periodic blood tests to observe its clotting ability. The test results are used to determine the dosage of warfarin necessary to achieve the appropriate clotting time. Prothrombin time, PT, is the most common test used for measuring the time needed for the clotting mechanism to proceed. It is also used to calculate the INR, which is known as the International Normalized Ratio. INR is a standardized way of expressing the PT, which makes the test results from different laboratories easy to understand and compare. Usually, the target INR range is 2 to 3, but under certain conditions, a different range can be used. If the blood clot takes a longer time to form, the PT and INR will be higher and vice versa. A lower INR shows the risk of a blood clot formation, but if the INR is above the target range, it shows a risk for bleeding. Side effects. Possible side effects of warfarin are bleeding is the primary risk associated with the usage of warfarin. Excessive bleeding can occur in any part of the body. Advise your patient to seek urgent medical attention in the case of severe bleeding involving nosebleeds, vomiting blood or substance that looks like coffee ground, blood in the bowel movement or dark colored stools, dark red or brown urine, weakness, dizziness, headache, constant bad stomach or nausea, pain, swelling, or other discomfort, particularly after an injury, and in case of a major fall or head injury, even if no other manifestations are present. Also advise your patient to seek medical assistance in the following situations. Bleeding gums while brushing teeth, excessive menstrual bleeding, or bleeding between menstrual periods, having a fever higher than 100.4 degrees Fahrenheit or 38 degrees Celsius, having pain or swelling at an injection site, vomiting, diarrhea, or inability to eat for more than 24 hours, or if they see something called purple toe syndrome. This is gangrene or skin necrosis that can result from the use of warfarin. Usually after three to five days from the start of therapy, it happens. And it happens when blood clots block the blood vessels due to lack of blood supply and an area of the skin tissue may die, leaving damaged tissue. Initially, there will be red or purple patches on the skin tissue, which is called purpura. Later, blood blisters may appear on the skin and eventually it will lead to painful skin lesions. These manifestations usually appear on the fatty areas of 
the body, like the thighs, abdomen, breast, and buttocks. In case of symptoms related to skin necrosis, advise your patient to seek immediate medical attention. Precautions. The effect of warfarin can be influenced by certain factors, such as diet and other medications. This is known as drug interactions. In the case of drug interactions, the dosage has to be altered in order to attain the target coagulation effect. Remember, the target INR is 2 to 3. Therefore, it is advisable to take the following precautions while using warfarin. Do not use aspirin. Avoid NSAIDs like Aleve and Ibuprofen and Advil as these drugs can increase the anticoagulating effect on warfarin. Also, do not use herbs that reduce blood clotting. Examples of such herbs are ginger, garlic, turmeric, ginseng, ginkgo, feverfew, St. John's wort, and chondroitin sulfate. Also, do not increase or alter vitamin E dosage without seeking professional advice as it enhances the anticoagulating effects on warfarin. Do not significantly alter the consumption of food rich in vitamin K as it lowers the PT and INR and decreases the anticoagulating effects of warfarin, hence increasing the risk of clotting. It is advisable to maintain a consistent diet with a balanced amount of vitamin K and avoid the occasional consumption of excessive vitamin K. Some foods rich in vitamin K are liver, spinach, broccoli, kale, Brussels sprouts, parsley, turnip, greens, green tea, and other leafy vegetables. Also, advise your patient to avoid grapefruit and cranberry products as they can induce excessive anticoagulation and bleeding when taken with warfarin. Advise your patient to also avoid or limit alcohol consumption to one to two servings occasionally, as it is considered to influence the body's ability to handle warfarin. Moreover, it also enhances the risk of injuries and thus bleeding. Other recommendations. Do not alter the dosage of warfarin without professional advice. The medication should be taken exactly as directed, and advise your patient to consult the doctor if adjustments may be made, or also if your patient is expected to adjust their diet, for example, in, in weight gain or loss, advise them to follow up with their doctor closely. And also, of course, advise your patient to avoid injuries and bleeding by simply avoiding sharp objects such as scissors, knives, and razors, and using electric gravers for shaving and soft bristle toothbrushes. Avoid activities that can lead to falls and injuries, for instance, contact sports. Avoid walking on slippery surfaces such as ice, wet, or polished floors, and have them remove Remove any loose items in the house, such as electrical cords and rugs, to avoid falling, slipping, or tripping. Have them ensure that there is enough lighting in all of the areas, including entranceways, stairwells, to avoid injuries and falling. In conclusion, the FDA approved warfarin for the use in 1954, and it continues to be prescribed to prevent blood clot formation, as well as blood clot migration. One interesting note, how however, is that it was originally used as a pesticide called Rodex, among others. Warfarin has since become the most frequently prescribed oral anticoagulant medication in North America. All right, guys, thanks so much again for watching. I really hope that it helped you out a ton. Remember, take the quiz. You can find the quiz right here. So, all right, I love you guys so much, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.